Our artist of the month this month is something very different. She is not a painter. She is not a sculptor. She is an aromatic artist. We have never had an aromatic artist as our artist of the month. So I want to introduce you to Roxana Villa. Roxana, come out here. Hey, Brian, welcome. Well, what a beautiful shop you have. We are at the Lena Street Wasps, right next to Iconic. The smells in here, the whole ambiance that you've created here, how did, how did you come about doing this? At a sweat lodge, I was introduced to essential oil of juniper. And I uh, picked up the bottle, and I brought it up to my nose, not knowing what it was, yeah. and closed my eyes and inhaled, and I was dropped into the redwood forest. Really? And had a very profound experience with the trees. And so you were transported, sort of. Your your consciousness was transported. Absolutely. So that got you thinking on a different level, obviously, about that experience that you had. And how did that create this shop that you have here? I mean, there's a lot of steps that must have came in between that. How long have you had this shop here? It's, well, let's see, about a, over a year. And how long did it take you to learn to make, you're making illuminated perfumes. And what does illuminated mean? So illuminated refers to illuminated manuscripts and also illuminating consciousness to how perfumes were originally made. So one of the big challenges that I have is that the word perfume has been taken over by the big industrial perfume houses, and they're using synthetic petrochemicals to make their perfumes, like, whereas I'm using plants. Okay, so you're doing it the way, the natural way that has, that has evolved from, how long has perfume yeah, been around? Yeah, well, you could say that perfume has been here as long as the first aromatic molecules, which come from the conifers. Oh, okay. It wasn't until humans, like, really figured out how, you know, what was happening, and that was over fires. Do you know, they put resins and wood on a fire, and then they noticed that the demeanor of the people changed, that um, the bugs were kept away, do you know, and then that turned into offerings. So it's, it has a really rich history, do you know, going back all the, through all the ancient cultures. And they were using plant material. They weren't using synthetic petrochemical. And this is why they were having these amazing spiritual experiences and experiences also within the physical body. So it's like perfume was medicine. So after your spiritual experience, you started researching perfume and, and learning how they made it. I mean, this opened up a whole interest to you of doing this? Absolutely. So I uh, became a professional aromatherapist. Okay. I started learning about aromatherapy and what essential oils are and how they work on the body. And then I realized that this was so much more powerful than creating a visual image because they're inhaling plant molecules. Do you know? Yeah. I can still remember the scent of my grandmother's house in Maine. There, I can remember going into the bathroom and how that bathroom smells when I was 10 years old. Right. And uh, I've never had a spiritual experience with perfume yet, but we haven't seen the rest of her shop, so let's take a look <laughs> at it. So we are in the first, this is the entry room of Roxana Illuminated Perfume. And besides the great smell of this room, this is one of the most interesting rooms I've ever seen in Santa Fe. I can just imagine that, that these ingredients, I mean, you're saying that the perfumes that are commercial have probably toxic petrochemicals and Absolutely. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has got to be, besides more natural, it's got to be healthier for you to put this on your skin than to be putting all those artificial ingredients. Exactly. Is that, is exactly. that how it works? Yeah, yeah. So, the way essential oils work is they go through our nose into our brain because we actually have um, receptors that hang down from our brain. And so when we inhale, it goes up into the brain and um, you know we have an immediate response. Like think about smelling something like an orange or a lemon and how 
bright and fresh and uplifting it is, right? And then the other way essential oils um, work is that they go through the skin. So the molecules are so tiny it can actually penetrate all the dermal layers of the skin. So you're absorbing the perfume and it's going to go in your bloodstream? Exactly. Wow. And this has all been proven by science. Okay. So this is beneficial, do you know, because it's plant molecules. So our body recognizes it, they use it, and the body uses it, and then it gets rid of what it doesn't need. And I have to ask, this isn't what I think it is. That's moss. Moss! Okay. Uh, what, what, did you, what did you think it well, was? Well, you don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing in here. Um, what do, you, what do you do with moss? What can uh, so there, there's an aromatic material called oak moss, which I can have you smell up in the lab. And it's one of, you know, it goes back in time through history, and it just it's one of my favorite materials. It's... So Roxanna, why don't you tell me about this beautiful space? How, how did this all evolve? vintage style relates to my essence and then my husband Greg is creating imagery he's illuminating each perfume with an image that has that resonance as well what, what, what is this bee over here so this honey bee was created by a local artist named Paul my emblem for my company is a honey bee honey bees go out and they forage or materials and then they bring it back to the hive and they put that nectar into an, um, a hexagon and then they uh, have evaporate out the water and then after about 30 days of working it they put a little cap on it and so I noticed that what they do is very much what I do I go out and collect you know all my plant materials yeah. I bring it back I create perfume with it, and then I put it into my little jars. So you're just a little working honeybee. I am, okay. exactly. I'm a forage bee. So when you walk in to Roxana Illuminated Perfume, one of the first things that I saw was this beautiful case. What is all this stuff? <laughs> so I call this the my scent case. Each drawer is one of my perfumes. And so if you look closely, you can see that like there's different plant materials and different colors for each of the fragrances. So when we came across this case, I had just heard the story of my great grandfather who was part of the first homeopathic pharmacy in Buenos Aires, Argentina, which is now a museum. Really? And when you see pictures of that glorious space that It's all these type of cases, and there's big murals on the walls, and it's Italian marble, wow. you know, and it's all these carvings with these, you know, ancient symbols of alchemy and the triple goddess. And so for me, this case evokes some of my ancestry, and then it's perfect because it has a drawer for each fragrance, and then I'm able to be behind the case and interact with individuals. Can, can you tell me what all these are? These look like little test tubes. And are you growing little embryos in here? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you all about <laughs> this, but not quite yet. Okay, I'll wait. What is this? This, <laughs> wait, are you making moonshine in here? Is this moonshine? <laughs> What is this thing? <laughs> so this is my copper still. We also call it an alembic. It is a still. Yeah. So what are you making with your still? So what I do is I put my plant material in the pot. Okay. And then I heat, heat it up. So the plant material goes in here with water. Okay. And so we've, we've got all the elements actually. So we have plant material and fire, and then we've got the water that goes in here. And then when the, the fire heats up the water, 
um, the water rises and turns into steam, which is elemental air, okay. right? And the steam is carrying over the aromatic molecules. And then it comes in here. This is our condenser. Um, so normally we have cold water in here. Okay. And the minute the water comes in here and starts going through here, the aromatic molecules separate from the water. And then it comes out down here. The water comes out down the, there? The water comes okay. out down there with the essential oil, actually. So, so this is pinyon. pinyon. So this is the hydrosol. Hydro meaning water. Okay. So it's the byproduct that we get when we distill for essential oils. So normally you'll have the essential oil floating on top of the water because essential oils are very light. Okay. They're volatile. They, um, they're, they're lighter than water, so they float on the top. And then you've got all this water and this water is actually very beneficial to ingest because it alkalizes the body. You can drink this you water. You can drink this water. You can also use it to spray for your skin or like here in Santa Fe because it's so dry. Yeah. It's really hydrating. Okay. And then we also use it to uplift and, do you know, help our moods. Wow. Can you make a mixed cocktail out of it? You can do that too. Woo! Yeah, so actually that's a that's a lot of um, what the mixologists are doing now. They're using hydrosols to create drinks. I have to say, the, the technology here, I mean, this is not like high-tech equipment. This has got to be the same way that they've been doing this for hundreds of years? Yes, thousands of years. Thousands exactly. of years. Yeah. Wow. Because mm -hmm. you think in this digital age, you, your iPhone could distill something now or something, but this is this is definitely the old-fashioned way. It is, absolutely. How and cool is that? So, like when I did this, what I did is I used the cones, the wood, do you know the resin, pinyon resin, oh. which is like, to me, the smell of Santa Fe. That's amazing. Yeah, so I smell Santa Fe in there. Mm. So what I do when I harvest my plant material is I go up to the tree and I communicate to the tree. I give the tree a little offering and then I take the plant material. So you keep it all on a, on a spiritual level too, on a conscious spiritual level when you're relating to the plants, when you're making your perfume through the whole process. There's a lot of consciousness and spirituality involved with the whole aromatic science that you're doing. Exactly. So all that is part of the intention that ends up going into the perfume. And then, so when people use the perfume, you know, depending how sensitive you are, you can pick all that up. Wow. It's all in there. There's a lot more to perfume than I ever knew. That's right. So the, even the word perfume, you know. What does perfume mean? So perfume means through smoke. So I like to, to say that I make pure fumes. Pure fume. Pure fumes. Pure smoke. Yeah. Nice. So this is a glass still. Okay. So do you know we were talking about old? Well, right. this is more, you know, this is more modern. Okay. Right? So in this one, I'm using electricity okay. to heat. And what we're getting ready to do here is a chemisa. Um, distillation. So chemise is one of our local native plants that's oh, very abundant. Okay. So I'm putting the flowers in here. So this is what everybody sneezes and is allergic to, right? right. Chemise? Well, yeah, that's what I've heard. Right? Okay. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you actually make a perfume this, out of it. Yeah, and maybe that's the homeopathic remedy, right? That will help with the allergy. Okay. Well, <laughs> I've never, I've never heard of chemise perfume. I would love to smell that. So what we're doing is we're putting the flowers in here with water okay. and then like with the copper still, the aromatics and the water are going to rise and then come on over and we collect it in the receiving flask over here. So come on up to the lab. I'd love to see So we are in the upper level. 
in the laboratory. What? What? What do you do here in the lab? <laughs> so basically, this is my workspace when I'm creating a fragrance. Okay. So I create solid perfumes, which use beeswax. Okay. And I work with. Uh, beeswax that I get from holistic beekeepers who are working with their bees almost like their bee guardians. You were know? saying the honeybee is your is, is my logo, my your emblem. logo. Yeah, okay, so, you can I, see. so the wax and the honeybee it all kind of ties in. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah, so the solid perfumes is just beeswax mixed with jojoba, which is an oil that it's actually considered a wax. Um, and so those two get put together. What I do is I, I put this on here, do you know, and then I measure out my beeswax. I put the beeswax in here and then I heat it up. I add my jojoba oil and then to that I add essential oils and I stir it and then I, do you know, pour it into the different vessels that will hold the solid perfume. Is there different amounts of ingredients that go into the wax for different things? Like let's say you're making a chamisa perfume versus a pinion perfume. Does that take experimenting how the best mixture is or how do you figure that out? Yeah, well, so I always have the beeswax with the jojoba and then the other ingredients that come in will be infusions I've made. Okay. So when I put a plant material like into an oil and I extract the both medicinal properties of that plant as well as the aromatic properties. And sometimes there's no scent, but it's the energy of that plant material, like oak leaves, for example. Okay. Um, and so it's the beeswax jojoba, my infused oils, and then it's all my essential oils. And in general, a perfume will have at least 16 different essential oils. Some of my perfumes have up to 40 different essential oils. Is the oil and the wax what makes the perfume scent last? Is that what makes, I mean, you want a perfume to last on you for a couple hours, right? Is that correct? Well, this is interesting. So, the, the we've come to think that perfume needs to last. Yeah. And part of that is comes out of, do you know, originally they were using animal ingredients to get the perfume to last on the skin. Okay. Then the petrochemicals came in and those molecules, you know, last forever. I mean, they're, they're now they're finding it in our water and in our bodies, you know, okay. so that's become a, a huge problem uh, for us humans as well as the planet and all the other animals and plant life that inhabits this planet, right? Okay. So what I'm proposing is that perfume doesn't have to last a long time, that just the process of re-anointing ourselves gives us an opportunity to center, to connect with the plants, and to breathe, right? So it's the ceremony and the experience, not necessarily the length that you're experiencing exactly. it, but just having that experience. Yeah, exactly. So there's, do you know, we don't have to have a perfume that, that lasts hours on end or days on end, right? Yeah. Because we can have a perfume that's made from plants, that's sustainable, and that then allows us to reconnect with ourselves and the plants as we put it on. And I have to ask, I noticed all these cards that are lined up here, are these cards what are these cards for? These cards are for the perfumes when I package them for okay. individuals. So each card is a different fragrance and there's a different color vibration with each card. And then you can see how there's the image cards and those are the illuminated images that Greg does for each of the fragrances. Basically these cards are just talking about the do you know like some of the, the essence of what the perfume is right so like for example here's the noir card can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you. <laughs>
primordial vital earth with a dark, a dark loamy plume featuring botanical musk. Yes. I create solid perfumes, but okay. I also create liquid perfumes in my 190 proof organic alcohol. Really? Yes. I think shut uh, up. Yeah, you can yeah. actually. No, I don't think <laughs> Maybe so, later. So a lot of um, artisans create tinctures with this alcohol because it's so pure, but I'm using it um, to create my alcohol perfumes. So those can be sprayed or they can, you know, be dabbed. You know, everything is made by me, by hand. Yeah. And I'm sourcing materials from around the world as well as making my own infusions and tinctures and distilling. So they come and go. Is there an advantage to solid over liquid or liquid or is it just a preference? For the most part, it's a preference. Okay. Do you know some people don't want to don't want to wear alcohol? Um, on their skin. The alcohol perfumes actually last longer for oh, most people, which okay. is interesting. And the alcohol, do you know because it's fluid, the essential oils are able to express themselves more. Okay. Do you know, so think about dancing or, or moving in water. Yeah. Do you know it's fluid so you can move better. They interact. It's, I almost see it as all the essential oils are individuals and they're all coming together to have a party <laughs> <laughs> party in the perfume <laughs> that's right with 190 proof alcohol <laughs> that usually gets a party going so essential oils come from plants and they come from different parts of the plants so for example in an orange we have the essential oils in the rind of the fruit and what i'm doing is i'm scratching it up a little bit and you can see, right, some of that liquid. Oh, it's starting to, yeah. Yeah, it's so smooth. Wow, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Right? So, so that's an example of where it comes from, the orange. And then I'm going to have you. You have your name on these. What are these? So these, these are one of the uh, really important tools of a perfumer and aromatherapist. We call these scent strips. Oh. And what we do is we use them to dip into our essential oil. And then when we create our blend in ar aromatherapy, we call it our blend or our synergy or our perfume, we use these to compose all the notes of the fragrance. So the language of perfume comes from music. Really? It the notes of the, the notes. Wow. Exactly. Okay. So we have bass notes middle notes and top notes. And orange is the top note. This is like the treble clef. You're up on the upper part of the keyboard? Yeah, exactly. Okay, is that is that a vibrational thing or is it just the way that you kind of rate the scent? It has to do with the molecules and how quickly they disappear. Okay. So with our top notes like orange, they disappear very quickly. They're very diffusive. You smell them. They're strong the, and they go. They, they're strong and they go. And the way I, I talk to my students about it so that they can visualize it, it's like you're sitting at the opera, everything is dark, and all of a sudden the lights come on the scene. So that's like your top notes, okay. right? So the lights come up, you, that's the first thing you know, we see is the yeah. light. And then everything else starts coming into play, right? So that's like your middle notes and then the bass notes. Is this a bass note? What is what is this? So this is wood. This is actually pinyon. So it would woods and resin tend to be located in in like the middle to Oh, base. okay. And then these are those those are rose petals. So essential oils come from wood, resin, um different kinds of fruits, leaves like the eucalyptus, um, basil, do you know, or fragrant? Oh, okay. Super fragrant basil. Oh, yeah. Right? And it's interesting because in aromatherapy, it's the essential oils that come from leaves that work on the lungs and respiration, and leaves look like the lungs 
Do you know, like you oh, have yeah. two leaves. You kind of right? spread out. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that's an example of tuning into the plant, how it looks. Do you know where it's growing? Um, the color. So those are all indicators of how the plant works with us to help heal us. This is just amazing. I just never knew there was this kind of science and study done into perfume and the way that the perfume affects our nervous system and all this. This is this is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> well, cool I, I see it as being one of the lost arts. Yeah. Do you know? It definitely because is. Because perfume is medicine. Yeah. Well, you're, you're the doctor of perfume, definitely. <laughs> so here we are at the perfume bar, and I've bellied up to a few bars in my day, but I've never have bellied up to a perfume bar. So, you're the bartender? Yeah, I am. What do we have here? These are... Uh, the solids, I can tell, and these are the liquids. Are they the, the same perfumes that you were making up there? Yeah, exactly. So what was reflected back to me is that the way I have the perfume set up is very much like they do wine. So we start with our lighter white wines here, okay. our lighter scents, and then we progress to the heavier, darker, and then we end with figure one noir, which is like a dark Syrah. So what I'd have you do is maybe start here, and what you do is you, these are scent domes, and what happens is that the perfume is emanating, and the aromatic uh, molecules, they're volatile, meaning they rise. The molecules get stuck in the dome, so when we go like this, we can smell that perfume because the oh, okay. molecules, so the molecules are contained are in there. there. Yeah. I'm gonna have you go through and smell. Okay. Wow, that's incredible. So the idea is that you're smelling and you're um, looking for what's resonating for so not only what resonates with your nose, do you know, but how does it make you feel? Like what's happening in your body when you're smelling it? Do you know, is it bringing up memories? Is, you know, sometimes memories get cleared when we smell something and the memory comes up and we process it and then we can clear it. Well, I have to thank you. This has been an incredible experience for me, an incredible learning experience, an incredible experience in, in being able to expand an area that I've never been able to experience before in my life. So I would suggest to anybody interested in this to please come down to the Lena Street Loft and you come visit Roxana and you experience what I have just experienced, which is taking something that I've taken for granted my whole life and now being a little bit more conscious and Illuminated. I feel illuminated. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you and thank you for coming.